All right, I think we're live. Hello, people. How are we all today? Uh, this may seem like a very unusual time of day. It is currently 4.30 p.m. here in Melbourne, Australia. And uh, I don't normally stream at this time. Uh, of course, I'm on school holidays. Uh, this is technically after hours. Um, I was kind of juggling between either streaming this morning or sleeping in this morning. And obviously, what would you choose, right? So, obviously, uh, I have been a little relaxed over the last few days. I've been thinking about making videos, you know, as with every, um, you know, term break, I get the chance to go out and film stuff. Except, of course, it's still winter, which means our daylight hours are still quite short. And of the time and the opportunities I get to do things, I can either do a bit of training or some filming or whatnot. And often... More often than not, it's the training which takes precedence, which makes sense. I'm in no hurry to make content, so I've got some things lined up, but that will be done in due time. And, you know, as we get towards the spring season, and the days get longer again, then there will be more chance to film things. Um, I don't really like filming during winter evenings and nights, even though I could. I don't really feel um, much, uh, you know, motivation to do so. So call it an off-season if you like. But uh, I've got a few things lined up. Now, uh, one thing I haven't been doing a lot is actual training. I said I was going to do it, but um, I know, I guess after a few weeks of intense training, I don't really feel, again, um, a direct um, goal to aim for. So I need to find both goals, motivation, and to maintain some sort of physical training. So I haven't really been doing that. But today isn't about me, today is about you. So for those who are joining me, um, you may already know how this works. For those who are new to this channel, uh, what we do is every now and then people send videos of their uh, archery technique and I give my commentary. Of course, I'm not a you know a top class coach, I'm just some guy on the internet who um, makes the occasional video. But people like getting some feedback and some advice. And hopefully you can get some uh, benefit from learning from other people as well. I've got around three or four videos lined up and I would normally schedule these once I get enough people sending in videos. Uh, again, if you're new to the channel, um, you want to send in a video for a form check, uh, do send it to my official email address, which you'll find um, on the YouTube channel at new.sensei.artry at gmail.com or you can send it via um, the Facebook page as well. I look at both and um, and a lot, a lot of people send me videos to have a look at. I can type out some feedback, but I find it easier to give feedback through a visual form. So I can actually show you uh, what you can improve. And again, as usual, um, if you um, would like to get a form check, send it to me uh, during the stream. I would be happy to have a look at it. These normally go for about you know half an hour to an hour, depending on how many people send in form checks. Um, so we have some quick uh, questions from the chat. Hello to everybody, by the way. Um, I know it's a different time of day for many of you. I'm not sure what time it is in your side, so feel free to tell me what time it is. I would never remember what time it is in your side. I'm assuming you're somewhere around, uh, I don't know where you are. Um, quick question, I think, from uh, Dick. Uh, what is the single most important piece of advice you would give to a new archer? Okay. Um, well, apart from having fun, which is what everybody says, um, for anyone who actually wants to become good at archery, the single most important piece of advice is to respect the process. Archery isn't about accuracy. That may seem counterintuitive, but it's not about accuracy. It's about consistency. It's about repeatability, and that comes down to process. Don't think of archery as a one-shot fluke. If you hit the bullseye, that's great. But if you only do it once out of 100 shots, that's not great. If you get it like 50 or 60 times out of 100, then that's good. If you get it like 80, 90 times out of 100, that's excellent. So it's about having a repeatable process. When you learn archery, uh, try to think of the steps that are involved in a shot process. And think of how it feels when you execute these steps. You will need to physically and mentally recognize when you do things right. 
and of course when you do things wrong you should also be able to say oh uh, this, this this didn't feel right to me so you can act on your own feedback now if somebody else is watching you or coaching you then you have an extra set of eyes and a lot more experience to guide you in this process but whether you're shooting with a partner or a coach or learning by yourself recognize the path in the process but you need improvement I think the hardest thing for any new archer is to identify what is right and what is not quite right. Um, again, somebody can easily tell you that if you don't know what the right feeling is, then that can be misleading. That's why um, learning by yourself can be tricky. Uh, it is easily possible, of course, but the less guidance you have, the more difficult it is to pick out what is not quite right. You can still hit the target with uh, improper form or imperfect form. But that doesn't guarantee you can repeat that consistently over a greater variety of distances. And that is, of course, uh, the, um, the, 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 the most important thing. Uh, to answer Dick's question, the most important thing is for a new archer, understand process. Process is what drives accuracy. It's what drives results. Uh, second quick question from Programming Cats. How come I've never talked about or mentioned the cartel, seri- uh, cartel bows? Um, cartel don't really make bows. Um, I've reviewed one cartel bow, that is the Cartel Phantom, which I thought was okay, but it's quite heavy. So I have reviewed a cartel bow. Cartel mainly makes accessories. They don't really make bows, apart from uh, one or two um, RLF risers. And a few um, a beginner bows. So the Cartel series is an example of a, of a, of a beginner bow. I don't have one. Um, they're not really sold widely while I am. Um, and even for the target bows, they're fairly uncommon. So you might occasionally see it. Uh, you might see it on Lancaster Archery, for example. But not a whole lot of people actually use Cartel bows because Cartel don't really make bows. Um, there are far more common uh, bow manufacturers which are more available in the open market. That's why I haven't covered the cartel bows. Uh, Tim Tam Archery. People tell me off at the club for using my middle finger. Uh, yeah, that's... <laughs> Alright, so um, I should longbow for an anchor. Uh, I like it because it brings the arrow closer to my eye. Is this form incorrect? It may be to some. The answer is no, it is not incorrect. A middle finger anchor is quite common um, for the, the same reasons you said. Uh, it is a more comfortable anchor for many people. So when we talk about anchor points, if you anchor the chief, for example, um, you might be taught conventionally to anchor here, your index finger, but many archers, many, this isn't an uncommon thing, but many archers will anchor, let's say, a middle finger in the corner of your mouth. And that is true. It's a more solid contact point for some people. It is absolutely fine. Anyone who tells you that it is wrong has a predefined notion of what is right. And it may be because they have blindly accepted a particular method. So by reading a book or watching a video, being told, this is how you do things, they don't understand why people don't do that sort of thing here. An example of an extra variation with this, uh, Tim Tam, is uh, people sometimes anchor, not just in the core of the mouth, but on the, the canine, or their teeth, a particular tooth. So for example, here, I've got a canine tooth here, as we all do, unless you've lost a tooth. But um, some people actually anchor specifically on the tooth because uh, the lips and the cheeks are fleshy, they move around, teeth don't. So if you hit in the right position, you might actually feel more comfortable touching a tooth or through your mouth, a tooth here uh, with your middle finger. So there are many ways to uh, um, anchor. Uh, so if somebody tells you your middle finger is wrong, perhaps give them the middle finger. Um, have I heard of junting bows? Of course I have heard of junting bows. Um, unfortunately for those who are looking at bow reviews for junting bows, um, I've been in touch with... Uh, at least one um, uh, salesperson from Junsing. Because um, the way these companies work, especially Chinese companies, they have distributors um, around the world. So each country might have you know, like one distributor or two distributors. So they work through, they call it middlemen. Okay, So there are middle people who will order from Junsing and they'll distribute in America or in Indonesia or China and so on, or Australia, for example. Um, I believe I was in touch with him, was, but he, he was the, um, the American uh, distributor. And um, the, the problem was that there, there, there's often um, a barrier, both language and culture, between the Chinese market and the Western market. And there are, it's hard to operate uh, overseas when you're based in China. So a lot of Junsing bows 
are sold on eBay or Amazon or AliExpress and so on. So I know Junsing, um, and Junsing manufacture uh, some of the Mandarin duck bones. So I know, I know I know the models they have, but uh, I don't have a way to get to Junsing and review the material, and they haven't approached me. So um, they've tried. I've seen the most recent catalogue, but I don't review Junsing bones because there's no direct line of communication between me and the company. Would I be happy to? Yeah, sure. If they send me stuff, I'd be quite happy to. Uh, do I think a Junsing bow is good for a beginner? The answer is, well, yes, they can be good for a beginner. Many bows are. It mostly depends on what kind of bow you are looking for um, and what, what, what you want to do with your archer, okay? I, I say, like, we say beginner bows, but there's really no such thing as a beginner bow. There's cheap bows uh, that we call entry level. But a beginner bow will function the same as an expensive bow. So it really depends on what you actually want to do with your bow. If all you want to do is shoot your bow in your backyard and have some fun, that's completely fine. If you are looking at competition archery, a jumping bow might not take you very far. And uh, they have some high-end models, but they haven't really been distributed and used um, in you know, the competitive circles. So we'll still see some of the big names like Hoyt and uh, Win and Win, MK Archery, and so on. Uh, you won't really see Jun Sing as a brand used by competitive archers for many reasons. But um, yeah, Jun Sing is fine as a bow, uh, but depends on what you want to use it for. So we'll take questions a bit later. Let's go through uh, some form checks. I've got a few on the uh, Facebook page. We'll start opening up. Uh, this one I uh, promised to you, Tomas. Or Tomas. Um, this is about back tension. And uh, this is... Um, a bare, a, a half naked video, I guess. It's the upper half, don't worry. But it's a great demonstration of back tension, but also uh, a way to see if we can improve this. So let's watch this together. Um, this is a very short example video. Um, let's make sure everything is running fine. Good, okay, let's watch this together. Um, and this is, a, and thankfully he's well built, at least well enough so that we can see the back muscles being worked. Let's see um, Tomas have a shot here. All right, let's go, let's watch. Right, let's turn the sound off. Um, there might be feedback there. So we'll see a very nice line of back tension there. Whoops. So he's using a stretching band, not a bow, um, and he'll release it. But we'll see that line here. This is a very nice. Now, there are a couple things which uh, he was struggling with. I'm not coming up with exactly what they were, but I'll give the general feedback to Tomas in this sequence. So firstly, what what he's doing really well. Um, you can see the back tension, the squeeze is huge. There's a very distinct, obviously, obvious line between the shoulder blades. So you can see that he's actively engaging his back muscles. Now, there's something I don't like from, from, from seeing from this angle, and that is the uh, reversal of the motion here. Now, watch as he draws. Now, if he draws to his chest, that's very low, and then it goes to his anchor point, which is higher up, and in doing so, he actually reverses the back tension. And this is a, a common habit, especially in trad shooters who are starting off and don't recognize the importance of the continuous draw. I uh, will talk about the continuous draw in a video sometime, maybe this week or next week, because it, it, it is a topic which I want to cover. But the idea of continuous draw is that you want to maintain one direction for your draw. You don't want to draw back then forward again. Um, you don't have a front view, but if you see the front view, you'll see You'll probably imagine what it's like. So he draws. Actually, I will show you um, on that topic since we've mentioned it here. So what we've mentioned is the chest draw. So some people will draw to their chest and then up here. You know, that's pretty much what Tomas is doing uh, in this sequence. So um, he's drawing, he's holding the bow, he's drawing very low to the chest, right? He draws to the chest. And then he goes up to the anchor point like that. And a lot of people draw low and anchor up. So that's completely fine. There's nothing wrong with a low draw. Some coaches don't like it, but that's a individual thing. So he engages his back muscles in his chest, um, towards his chest. So it's fully expanded. Fantastic back tension. And then he anchors and then he releases. What Tomas is doing, which may be inefficient, is that he actually overdraws on his chest draw. So when he draws, rather than going here, low, uh, have the back tension and then anchor and then squeeze the rest of the way through, which would be a very clean process. What it looks like is that he is drawing past his normal anchor point, coming back up this way, 
and then drawing. And I'm exaggerating the motion for the camera, but you can see part of the problem. It is this motion and then up and then comes out. So the result, and we'll see again in the video, is that he um, experienced a loss in back tension. So he draws, and I see how low. So his hand is basically there. So he's up to his near his right pectoral, um, where his hand would be. So he's got full back muscle engagement, which is really good. That would be the end point, not the start point. I think he's gone too much, too low, too soon. And then when he engages there, so he'll, he hasn't anchored yet. So he's practicing his uh, back tension draw, um, but he's not yet anchored. Shoulders are, sorry, shoulders are fairly even. Um, that's completely fine. Then that's where he drops it, okay? So when you see that back tension drop, you know that something's been lost. So he drops it, there. He's lost the back tension. He anchors and he releases right away. So it's still a strong shot, no doubt. Like this, this motion, he's following the good line. So this release is nearly textbook perfect. Perfect T-shape. His muscles are very well engaged. His follow through is nice. So it's got a good shot process. But what could be better is if he actually drew, um, so let's try again. So from this point, if he draws here, and then he anchors, and then he goes through, that might be better. Because we see that's the max engagement, and then he loses the engagement, and then he just does a shot. So it's not at his maximum power. So it's not a bad shot process, but a coach would probably pick up that he's drawing too low too far, and that's causing some other problems. Um, again, he's shooting nicely. I mean, the fact that he's actively engaging his back muscles is a very good sign. Um, I, I would probably, and it's actually a good example, uh, a hasty shot. This is probably not the best shot to look at. But what I look for in good back muscle engagement is this um, shoulder blade actually coming out and dropping down. So you draw to your anchor and you drop your elbow to get this maximum engagement. I feel that because he's actually reversing it, this is a pretty unfair, uh, unfair shot, I guess. He, he, you can see that the, re the motion's in reverse. So he actually comes in and comes back out on the release. So he loses the um, the back muscle engagement. Let's go back to the first video, uh, first shot. So you see the back muscle engagement. This is the better one, I think. He comes in, but then when he anchors, he drops the back tension. So he's shooting quite inefficiently. So that that's probably what I would improve on would be to um, try to uh, reverse the motion. Have this as the final point, not the um, the initial draw. So overall, good back tension on this one, uh, but as you can see, it, um, there are clearly signs uh, that um, you could improve the process and streamline it even further. So that's our first uh, video it's from Tomas. So thank you, Tomas, for sharing that. A very nice back tension video. There's also another one which um, I had a quick look at. Um, I'm trying to find who it was. Um, wasn't Tomas, uh, Cruz. Okay, so this wasn't one I said I would live stream, but because um he needed feedback, I want to show this to uh, everyone as well. So let's get it ready. So um he is shooting I believe a Samic Sage, uh, and it's just starting out. So um we'll look at this uh in a moment. I'll have a bit of a drink break. I'll have a drink break. Feel free to ask questions. Um, Jimmy, you shoot right-handed and my string picture is quite far to the left of the sight. Is this okay? If it's that far to the left, that's probably not okay. The further you are away, the harder it is to maintain consistency. You want to maintain a compact um, sight picture so that there is less variation. If you have too much of a gap between what you see on target and what the sight is or what the string is, then you've got a slight problem. You can't really, like a few millimeters out in the corner of the eye will result in you missing the target by like a few centimeters or even a few meters at long distance. I would really recommend that you look at trying to change your alignment to be closer in line to the middle. Um, what can you do to be more line to the riser? Um, think about firstly two things, the where, where exactly you anchor on your face and where you how you angle your face okay so if you need to, you might want to change the way you let's say I'm looking at your target right here right you might want to change the way you look at the target from here to here this is a huge difference so the combination of your anchor point and your head angle will be of a great influence to how you see your sight picture 
Mm. Ah, manifold dehydrate for some reason. That's today's like artery juice. Um, it's green cordial, but reminds me of um, Inui juice, um, juice from um, uh, Prince of Tennis or Tennis no Oji Sama. Uh, those who watch um, a fairly old anime, um, but um, there's a new series that's been more probably more well known. But um, I grew up with um, Prince of Tennis. Anyway, um, another question from uh, Dennis. Um, you're finding it hard to find a consistent uh, anchor point. Uh, do you have some tips I could use to get a consistent anchor? Um, what I would advise is first, of course, experiment. But also, you need to note down what it is that works. You need to firstly mentally note down um, actually verbalize, articulate what you were doing. This is actually something that a lot of artists don't do and should, and that is talk through their process, okay? So that way you, you cement, you reinforce what it is that you are doing which works. I mean, eventually you might write it down or record yourself, like film yourself, doing the process so you can see exactly what you're doing and you can go oh that worked but this didn't so for example if you're anchoring um and you can't quite find the right place on your jaw so some people draw quite close to the center others draw further back this variation is huge for most arches so what you might do is say something like all right i'm gonna feel i feel my thumb under my my jaw I'm gonna get my my uh this 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 V shape in my jawbone right here. So you actually say this to yourself. All right, V in the jaw, V in the jaw, and you repeat this motion, V in the jaw, and you don't shoot until you get this right. And you say this to yourself, shot after shot, until it becomes subconscious. So that's my advice on um, thinking about our consistent anchor points. Uh, just you need to reinforce exactly what you're doing because you might be consistent on the first shot but the second and third shots you might be doing something different because you've done one shot if you're slightly more fatigued and you can't quite get the same feeling for the rest of the end so that's when you need to articulate what you're doing especially in subsequent shots where um you know you've disturbed the waters your mind's a little cloudy from your previous shot so you might have to just say all right, do this and walk through the steps. That's my advice for you. Um, Brian, a beginner tiger bow versus standard Samix H metal riser. I'm not sure what the question is there. Uh, Brian, you might want to clarify that a bit more. Okay, let's go to our next form check video. Here we go. Um, this is from... Who's this from? <laughs> uh, this is from Cruz. I thought that, yes. Okay, so Samix H. We just mentioned Samix H before. Um, and this is a very low angle shot. But we'll see, we'll see what I mean. Man, this guy's a giant. Look at him. Anyway, um, let's see him shoot. So watch, I believe he's having trouble with his anchor point over here. So we'll see um, the process of the shot. Over there. So what can we observe about Cruz that can help him improve? Mm. Alright, that's a shot. Okay. Okay. Alright. Uh, we can probably see where he's at with this one. So, um, he's doing, he's doing a lot of right things from the beginning. So there's nothing um, uh, hugely, terribly wrong. And uh, I think that the main thing we'll focus on is his anchor and his back tension. And therefore, it's released. So those three things. All right, that's actually a better shot there. So the first few were a little rushed. That one he held for a bit longer. Um, he kept a bit more stable. So that, that was a pretty good benchmark to look at. That's a little better. But we'll we'll, we'll, we'll talk about uh, what he's doing here. So we just slow it down. By the way, there's no way to slow it down on um, Facebook yesterday. Okay. So let's watch this shot sequence. The one uh, the, the, there's a motion which he does, which you might have recognised by now. So let's see what he's doing right so far. So his stance is very consistent. He's not moving around, which is a habit a lot of people have. So he's keeping his stance quite solid. Um, from this angle, it seems his shoulders are fairly well in line, um, and he's got a pretty good grip on his bow. So things are looking pretty good so far. Um, it looks like he's chosen um, a fairly high anchor point. 
is using a sight, which um, you don't really need to use a high anchor point for a sight. Let me try, yeah, he's not using a low anchor point. That's fine, by the way. It's a little unorthodox because most people who shoot with the sight will use a low anchor point, but that's actually fine. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but we'll see the shot and the motion. So I would want to slow this down, but we can't quite do so. So up to this point, it seems most things, from this angle at least, look okay but what would he do differently he probably need to maintain his back tension and um, squeeze the back muscles together just the shoulder muscles together and therefore um, complete the shot with an expanded motion what he tend i think what he's doing he's collapsing the shot so as he releases he's pulled forward by the bow and you can see when he releases it's it's um his arm bends he uh, his head moves forward and his torso rotates so he's not maintaining back tension. Um, so the easy way to think about this is to when 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 you anchor, remember to keep on drawing the bow, not like pulling back with your hand. So not not pulling further back, but to hold this anchor point, squeeze the shoulders together and keep that shot going and this is a, such an important part of archery is that continuous motion keep on keep this arrow moving back don't let the arrow creep forward and you watch what i shoot i do this a lot too i let the arrow creep forward especially on heavier bows and on a light bow keep this in mind you want to let the arrow move backwards keep on opening up if you stop the motion or you start reversing the motion you see the collapse and we'll see the shot this probably should be collapse. Yeah, so that's a that's a collapse shot. So he's is he using a release aid? No, he's using a tab, isn't he? Yeah, he's using a tab. Yeah. So we see the shot. Um, the release is a little surprising. Um, it's like, oh, how do we release this thing? So it's a very um, it's a static release. Um, that the hand drop is uh, superficial. Um, so we will see the shot again. Um, he draws. Okay. So this is the point where he should squeeze the muscle together. Relax the fingers, let the string come off the fingers, and his hand will naturally come back. It's just due to Newton's third law of motion. So his hand should naturally come backwards. But what we'll see is the hand will be a dead release. It'll drop, kind of it will flop around for no reason, and his head will move forward and his arm will move back. So you need to push forward with the bow while pulling him back with the arm. So you can see um, arm collapses, head jumps forward, and the uh, hand drops limp. So those are the things I recommend for crews. Would be anchor, keep a very strong anchor, which is which is, is what he's doing, but keep on pushing and pulling with the bow. And that 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 particularly is a is a very obvious sign of a um, a collapse. So he draws. Oh, actually he moves for the shot. So that's a bit of a, might be a draw weight issue. And that might be the case. He draws in. He t he kind of flinches forward. And then he actually loses his um, body alignment completely in that shot. Let's see what else he does in this one. I think, I think we've covered most of the areas need to improve on there. He's got a straight arm there, but you can see that 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 um that bent arm, it's a size not maintaining his engagement. He's um if he maintains engagement, the arm will stay straight, and his hand his other hand will come back to behind his ear. But you can see it's a it's a limp release. His arm drops down. Um, the release should be. Uh, relaxation, I guess, um, but it doesn't help if you are not maintaining the tension to begin with. So um, yeah, so it's the same thing for each process. Uh, we see the pattern now. So to make this better, it would be to focus on using the back muscles. So um, anchor, uh, engage the back muscles, squeeze through, keep on, keep the shot going. You might hear your coach saying this: keep the shot going. That means don't let this um, stop or don't let it collapse keep expanding through the shot that's my advice for crews that's our second video so far Woo, that's nice looking good all right that's our second facebook one i think uh, that's the last one i've got there uh and we can move on to our um our one from youtube okay uh so we'll have a quick drink break again mm. We have phones ringing. Um, the, uh, I, I don't care. Um, the, the nobody rings a landline. It's all about it's all telemarketers. It's pretty silly. Hmm. Um, hi, Kervin. How to get into our tree? Um, 
like most people, um, I just there's a club nearby. Someone, one of my friends, got me to um, try it out, and I liked it. So I did it for seven years. Um, I, I don't have a uh, an initial interest in archery. Like I, I liked the fantasy aspect of bows, but I was never really into um, bows. Like as, as a historical thing, I just liked reading about it. Um, I liked looking at ranger characters and you know fantasy stories and so on. Uh, but I, I personally don't. Um, I didn't have a, a interest in archery beforehand, but um, yeah, I, I I got into archery and I liked it because it was individualistic. It was all about me, and therefore um, it was quite um, you know something I could uh, stay with. Uh, stay with. I'll be right back. By the way, guys, I've got an answer machine that I'll turn off a bit. So I'll be right back. That's done. Um, why don't we keep a landline? Um, be, well, it's a good point actually. Like in, in modern days, like most of us using like cell phones and mobile phones, so it's no point you keep a landline. It's not my house, by the way. So um, we still have a landline. Uh, it's also tied to our internet account, so we have a landline plus. Um, yeah, it's a landline plus our internet. Um, so it's all in one package. It doesn't hurt to have a landline. Um, and there are certain things where you need a landline. Um, good example is if you need to call the ambulance. Um, if you call um, emergency services if you, with a landline, um, they would track your um, your call to your landline. Uh, whereas if you use a mobile, they can't track it right away. So, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's an annoyance like 95% of the time. Um, because yeah, everyone calls mobile, right? nobody calls landline. Um, people who you know, who know you call by your mobile. Um, but we have a landline just because we have one that's a, uh, we a throwback, but it's an annoyance like 95% of phone calls are telemarketers. Um, we, we're not a very social family, by the way, you can probably tell. Um, Jordan has, has, a, uh, has, has a repeated request here. Um, you want a review of a bow under $50? No. Um, there's no bow under $50 worth reviewing. Under $50 means you're buying fiberglass. That's youth bows. Um, you, you can't buy something that resembles a bow under fifty dollars. That's why I won't do any because they don't exist. All right, the the baseline is like a hundred and twenty dollars for like a Samic Polaris or Samic Sage or one of those bows. You won't find a bow worth reviewing and a or bow worth shooting under fifty dollars. So uh, no, uh, can I do one? I can't because. Those bows don't exist, Jordan. You can send me a link to one if you want to, but uh, like the bows you get are pretty much fiberglass youth bows. So um, I can't review what doesn't exist. Sorry, that's the reality of it. All right, we'll go to our next one. This is from Boots. Bootsy. A uh, long time no see, I think. So let's watch this. Um, we might watch it on YouTube, actually. I might be a better way of doing this. Okay, let's get the thing set up. Now, I think Bootsy is using um, a low draw weight. Um, it's a 24 pound bow on the new Galaxy Crescent. Actually, I'm interested in doing I'm um, looking at this um, bow. It's a left handed riser, interestingly enough. Uh, but let's have a quick look at Bootsy. Now, it does commentary. Um, I'm gonna. I might subtitle it actually. Um, so you can see this better on screen. So this is, I think, a 25 pound bow under fingers. Um, so let's see what we've got here. So uh, let's watch this next one. Jordan, there is no bow under 50 bucks worth reviewing. So I've already said that. Um, let's watch this together. We'll get it set up there and we'll switch the screen. There we go. Okay, this is Bootsy. All right, so Bootsy, I think he's recovering from uh, shoulder injury. So he's been shooting a light bow. Let's actually not talk about the, um, <laughs> the, uh, the subtitles. So he's using a light bow to recover to rehab. I think he's got heavier limbs, but he's been shooting low draw weights for quite a while. <laughs> That's so Australian in the background, wow. Okay, so um, let's actually see him shoot. Sorry, I, I, know you're, yeah, I know you're commentating, but I'm going to see a shot process. So it is nicely decked out of a bow. Oh, that's a pretty bow. That's a pretty bow. That's a Galaxy Crescent. That's nice. Nice color in that one, too. Um, that's a lot of stabilizers, too, by the way. Now, if you worry about your shoulder carrying too much weight, I mean, that, that to me is a bit excessive. You've got, like, stabs here, stabs down here, 
and stabs like this there's more stabilizer than bow <laughs> uh, if it works for you then go for it i guess but um my initial impression might be uh that you might your bow might be a little front heavy um <laughs> uh but who am i to judge right i mean I, I might use i mean this used to be very popular like people didn't use um like long like uh long rods in the middle in the 19 like 70s and 80s it was mostly like um like a small rod or like long rods on the top and bottom uh, it works but it you rarely see it now because it's too front heavy i mean uh, there, there are weights here i guess on the back there are weights in the back which do balance it out but is it too much you have this much weight this much weight this much weight you, you, you are kind of negating it by placing this in the balance over here which does work i guess um that's a lot of mass uh, on the bow. If you want the mass, that's fine. That's probably why I would do it. Okay, back to the shot. Uh, Alright, let's have a look. Okay, so we'll watch the draw technique. That's not bad. That's not bad. It, it's a controlled draw. So it's a light draw weight, which is good. Which is why people who start archery, you've got to learn light draw weights. Um, the, the control of the draw is very important from start to finish. So we see the, the shoulders should be set in line, so they are very level here. That's good shoulder alignment. The draw is well controlled. I, I might want to see the elbow turn a bit more. This isn't a huge problem, but I might want to see this turn a bit more. Because it, it might cause, that, that it comes up better there. Watch out for the shoulder rising. That That's something I think, you can see the movement there. This, this is a grown nice angle, you can see the gap between the shaft and the shoulder. So as we see at full draw, that shoulder will rise until it touches, which isn't a bad. Now, I mean, everyone has natural upward movements. It's not bad, uh, but the, uh, the top arches will minimize that movement here. So as far as the shot goes, um, so far so good. This might be a hunch, Bootsy, but I've got a feeling that's too heavy. I've got a hunch because the arm drops. Uh, it's. Yeah, I've got a hunch that um, you can see the, sh the shake in the front arm. It's it's not much, but I've got a slight hunch it's not too much weight. Let's see the next shot. Because it's it's hard to feel the the um the process of a light bow. With a heavier bow, there's a more pronounced thunk, so the body reacts in a more um in a more pronounced way. Um, but, I think the hand came out a bit too much there, a bit too much of a flick or pluck. If it come out there, I think that came out a bit too far. Uh, it's draw coming back in line. It's not bad, actually. It's actually, it's actually okay. The, uh, some of these things could be a bit more compressed, but again, like the light draw, it's make it quite hard to diagnose sometimes. That's okay. It's a nice shot process. He's using click, I believe. Seems to be working quite well for him. I see this process again. So he draws low. I mean, like um, a lot of archers draw high. I, mean, I think the um, the standard archery Australia method is to start at like eye level or nose level. So most people start higher. He starts quite low, and I'm sure if it's a shoulder problem. The reason why we start higher is because we don't want to push the the shoulder upwards. If we start low, we're more prone to do so. So if we start higher, it brings the shoulders in line when you come down. This is probably perhaps I think I'm not sure if this is a problem for Bootsy, but this um this starting point is not what I would teach someone. And bear in mind it's just because, you know, like this is the way we, we learn things, right? So we are generally um taught and this is the standard archer story method but i think nearly every um top archer will start quite high the koreans definitely do um i think the ksl method tends to be for quite high as well so we start higher because when we, when we draw our shoulders will drop down but that, that's a normal thing that's really lines we normally drop down on the shoulders like that it's our motion this is a, a natural motion to do this right so if we do this we try and drop down the shoulders so it kind of keeps level if you draw low like this our habit is to draw upwards 
and it tends to push the front shoulder up when you do that. So I think that's why um, you need to be careful about the low draw. If a light draw weight, it's okay. But with a heavier draw weight, this may be a bit more difficult than what you might anticipate. So just be careful with that method. Um, it's not to, it's not a standard draw. It's not uncommon. It's not standard though. So just do bear in mind that if you do it for a reason, that's fine. Um, but if you've chosen to do so because, just because, uh, you may want to think about starting a little higher, like starting at eye level and dropping down. Um, that might put less pressure on your front shoulder and engage your back muscles a bit more. That's, that's one thing I'd probably point out. Um, apart from the process, I mean, the, the hand is relaxed, the shoulders stay in line. It's okay. Yeah, no, it comes out nicely. It's very, it, it's an exaggerated motion. I think some coaches might point out that you can, you can do the same draw with less movement. It's a bit much of a, it's a bit wasted. It's not wrong. Uh, but some coaches will kind of ping that and say, well, you should draw closer to your line. Uh, if you go too much off, you're wasting time and energy. You draw. You, you want to keep the draw short, compact, and efficient. Like that's a very pronounced draw. And a lot of top archers will have a very long draw, uh, but they've worked that process in for a reason. Again, if um, Boots uh, has chosen to do this for a reason, then ignore this. Uh, this is probably not what I would teach to most people. Uh, like I said before, it's a bit too much movement um, to my life. But if you want to hard to speak, right? So it's a bit too much. But at least it's going through, I think mentally it's going through the physical process quite well. So he recognizes the right muscle engagement. I think overall, the shot's fairly decent. I feel the release is a bit too active, um, too conscious. Bit, bit of a release there, a uh, pluck I guess. Yeah, uh, again, I don't like this because it's there's too many variations. In a draw, so there's too many things to go wrong with a low draw like this. This is a very, very low draw. Like that, it's chest level. And to me, if I, this, this is one screenshot, kind of points out why I think this is really not a good method, because the tension to the arm is not clean. It's going through. I mean, he's pulling out this way. The tension's going up his arm, and it's going through his shoulder upwards. I feel this is not a good starting posture for the shoulders. Um, it creates problems. He does get the line correct later, so it's he rectifies it. But I feel that starting point, in my opinion, is a little low. Not illegal, just a little too low. And if, if he's using a heavier draw, he might have more trouble um, getting that movement in cleanly. So what it, it's one of the things which might work well for a light draw weight, it might not work well for a heavy draw weight, which won't affect you if you're not shooting heavy draw weights, but if you want to, you might find this being not as efficient. Otherwise, everything looks quite nice. I mean, the, the, the arm and the arrow are very clean. That's right through the, uh, the middle there. That's so straight. That, that's nice. It's almost see some nice back muscle engagement. Um, that was a better shot there. Again, it feels a bit... Let's have a look here. Ah, it's not bad. No, that, that's okay. I mean, it's, it's a clean line. I have to roll on that. I mean, uh, there's no point in diagnosing a follow-through. Um, I mean, uh, I, I pr I pr probably a more... Um, Refined process will have the hand come close to the neck rather than going all the way back over here. Um, but the process looks fine, the squeeze looks okay. He seems to have some fairly good control over the shot, so I'm not too fussed about most of this sort of thing here. Yeah, that, that's alright. I mean, this is a pretty standard follow through, so I don't think too, too outstanding. So, if there's a couple of things I might highlight as points of interest, not things to change, but as points of interest, it would be the low draw. I, I, I would suggest as a coach to use a higher starting point. So start at um, nose level or eye level and bring your, bring your elbow down rather than coming low and upwards. It's, it, this seems to go against 
official um, efficient muscle usage um, and the main reason is I think it, it tends to promote um, too much uh, weight on the front shoulder being pushed upwards which is going to cause strain with a heavier bow I'd also I don't know th this is your preference here to me this is overkill on stabilizers um, but if you want a heavier bow that works uh, completely fine there and I think um, for the most part the, 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 the important part the line, the expansion, and the shot itself, I think work pretty well. So I think that's okay, just keep on working on that and get it more fluid um, in your process. So good stuff there, thank you a lot, Boots, hopefully it helps. Okay, um, sorry, I didn't even show the thing there. Um, let's try that one again. So the, the point of interest, um, just to repeat that, sorry, I, I did come the wrong thing there. So the, the point of interest here is the low draw. So um, I didn't really like the um, the low draw as much. So the three points are the low draw looks a little too low, which means that there's too much excess for movement in the arm, and it's kind of hard to repeat on a shot-by-shot -shot basis. It's also less efficient uh, on a heavier bow because it, it puts the, um, the weight on the front shoulder here which is not good that's that's kind of something you don't want to damage with this technique um the arm and the arrow look are perfectly aligned which is really good here um but the other point of interest is i think the weight's a bit overkill um again this is your preference uh but if the weight is actually making it harder for you to keep your arm up then i might drop the weight on your on your long rods or drop a few long rods otherwise shot's pretty clean um, i think it's a good um uh, a, a good process. Again, that's, that's something you don't see many people do. Un unless there's a reason for it, like a shoulder injury. I think there is shoulder injury here. But um, yeah, uh, it's a bit low to my liking. Uh, but you might want to build up and use um, high draw, like starting from nose level and coming down, running this way upwards. It's a bit unconventional. Not wrong, just not unconventional. Otherwise, this part, the important part, is completely fine. It should come out nicely. Um, just keep on working that motion. That, that's a good shot there. Keep on working on that. And you should be okay. All right, that's the uh, the, the second uh, second version. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, it can be tricky sometimes to uh, manage uh, which cameras on which camera. Okay, that was from Boots. I think we've got one more uh, from email. Uh, yes, and if you have any more, feel free to send to me. This is oh a very high quality one. So let's get this one ready. This one's from Sean. And Sean's using a forged elite riser, uh, 32 pound limbs, and other stuff. So we've got quite a few angles here to work with, and we'll, we'll show this in a moment. But before that, uh, let's um, have a drink break. Again, sorry about the uh, weird camera before, I forgot I didn't change. Mm. Uh, Tariq, um, look, I, I've had people show me worse. Um, if you want feedback, I mean, two months is not bad. Um, I've had people like, show me stuff for the first month. Um, there's a lot of rapid development over two months. So um, if you want to get feedback, feel free to send it to me. It's not about being trash or not, but it's more about do you have the right guidance. Um, if, you're, if you're learning from an archery club or range someone's teaching you, then don't stress about it too much. I'm sure they'll be teaching you the basics and reinforcing good process and technique. If you're not getting, getting much guidance, feel free to send it to me. I'll be happy to have a look at it and give you some um, feedback. Um, people who start out don't need a lot of feedback. It's kind of, as fun as it sounds, um, the main point of like coaching is to make good archers better. Coaching isn't meant to you make like new archers good. Uh, so that, that's something to keep in mind. So um, if you want some general advice, I'll, I'll give you a few general advice, uh, a bit of general advice, but um, you don't have to, no, no pressure there. Um, Uka, why Uka products so expensive? It's mostly because it's a supply demand, um, there's, there's, there's not much of it, and people want it, so uh, that's probably the reason why. Um, what's this bow talking about here, the, the Grossman AB1, what is that? Grossman Elkhorn Jr., I'm going to look this up very quickly. Grossman Elkhorn Jr. What is this bow you're talking about? Um, okay. Ah, all right. A uh, online bow, Amazon bow. That is a cheap fiberglass piece of crap. 
Um, I'm, I'm, I think I've seen this before. Um, yeah. How much is this? Th th use 35. What's brand new? That's that's ugly. Here, yeah, bing. That that's the uh, crossman. Um, my review of this is it's pretty crap. Look, oh, sorry. It's this is if you spend like less than fifty dollars on a bow, you're gonna get crap. Um, these are cheap fiberglass arrows, which uh, aren't spying for the bow. The accessories are made from cheap plastic. Um, the sight pin is crap. It'll come loose after like three shots. The um, the arm guard doesn't really do anything. The finger tap is pretty pointless. Um, isn't really. It's the cheapest of cheap. It's like a you know less than one dollar tab. It'll it'll tear after about twenty five shots. Uh, won't feel well. Won't protect your fingers at all. Um, there's no like useful points on the bow. You won't grow with it. There's no modularity, um, and it's going to be a pretty inefficient bow. So basically, it's worth that amount of money. It's basically fifty dot fifty buck crap. Okay, I'm not gonna review this because this is just generic plastic stuff. It's if you want to spend the bare minimum to have a bow to shoot like once, like ever, then yep, sure. But um, if you want to shoot more than once, don't buy this. Like, save the money and buy a decent compound bow, the proper one, not an Amazon, you know, kids kit. Um, no, I'm not reviewing this. It's it's not good. Um, I mean, the reviews I will say very good things because hey, it's a bow it shoot. Shit, it it, it it shoot. Sure, but. Like the stuff you get here, that that's not stuff that I would recommend unless you're like um, eight years old. If you're eight years old or ten years old, this is really cool. But if you want to do archery seriously, I would not recommend this at all. So that's the review um, for those if you're curious. All right, where else were we? Yep. Okay. That's it. All right, let's go to our uh, next. Uh, sorry. Um. All right. Uh, have I started my complete IOF breakup? No, I actually haven't started yet. Um, I mean, it takes time to order things. I haven't started ordering yet. Like, I, I know what to get, kind of. Um, but I haven't been like archery shopping. I've been lazy the last few days because of school holidays. It's just, you know, um, kind of chill for a bit. Uh, it is for people with no clubs in the area, like ideal locations for archery, as long as it's illegal, you know, like you can't shoot your own um, property, then go to like a farm or go to a nice spot in the woods, as long as it's illegal um, and safe. Um, so you need to find a, sp find a space. You know, there's no club, find a space to do so, make a space. Alright, let's get to our last uh, review. At least the last formal review. Um, if you want to send anything in, now's the chance to do so. But uh, let's remember now to actually bing, um, go in and do this properly. Okay. Um, Uka, people use Uka. You don't see a lot of it. People still, people, a lot of people use Uka. Because I mean, when you start, you, you don't see people. You're talking about like top archers, you're talking about like, you know, like casual amateurs. That's a little different. Okay, let's do this. Is my window kind of oversized? I think it is oversized, Hannah. Have I been doing it wrong all the time? <gasps> oh my goodness, it actually fits now. What do you know? For the last like six months, I've got an oversized window. Ah, makes sense, makes sense. Okay, let's now watch this. All right, so this is from Sean. Sean's shooting, by the way, shooting downs, I believe. So um, the arms won't be quite aligned. And if you're shooting downwards, you probably want to bend the waist. It's probably the first thing people say. If you're shooting level, then this is good. It's a nice straight back. Uh, this can work, but for the same reason I said before, it might push more pressure on your front shoulder. Um, the angle is, looks kind of weird when you see it from a camera point of view. Um, where's the arrow? Yeah, it's shooting downwards. Okay, if, if you have to shoot downwards, that's okay. Um, but you might have to change the way you um, align this. It's generally better to uh, bend at the waist and keep the shoulders in line instead of uh, doing this. Because one thing you'll see is that your arm is pointing too high. Uh, a rule of thumb to kind of, you want to keep the arm in line with the arrow as much as possible. Um, and at, at worst, you want to have your um, arm pointing towards the bow grip. So you have this line here, that would be optimal. But we follow the um, line of the arm, the elbow is here, the uh, forearm is there, it points downwards more towards the uh, bottom half of the riser. 
So I think right away your arm's a bit too high. Just from the back view. Um, shot process. Ooh, ah uh, yes, I remember this video. I think your arrow is too long. Or the click is too short. One of those two. It's a very long um, pull through. I can't quite see the the um the tip of the arrow, but you can see it's a very large motion you get the arrow through. So that might be one advice is check your clicker length on this one. Because that can ruin a lot of things. So that A motion is a bit I don't like the A motion there. So it's come to full draw. Now at this point, it comes in, anchors, that's Fairly decent. I think I think the arm's a bit high, like I said before. But if you're shooting a target that's level to him, that's it should be pretty decent. I mean, if I was to let go now, that would be a pretty clean shot. Except that he's shooting target down here, so he has to drop the um the bow. There we go. And I don't really like this motion. Again, it's it's not going to work well on a heavier bow if you ever get there. But you can't hover this long. Um, I mean, like I said, the the ideal. Um, draw hold times about like two and a half seconds to three seconds. So if you anchor here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, not yeah, about about eight seconds, seven and a half to eight seconds. That's, that's too long of a process. So if you if you get used to exactly where to set up your shot. Uh, most people will aim slightly above the target on pre-draw and drop the sight onto the target at full draw. So what Sean's done here, he's started, I mean, this is where for most people you're spot on, but he's not on target, he's actually off target, so he's drawn too high, and then he drops lower. It takes about two seconds to do so, and about like four and a half seconds to finish this shot. So there are some issues here with um, firstly the setup, you need to set up consistently on target so you don't have to compensate each time you draw. Um, but this expansion is worrying. I think that's something we'll see a bit more on the, the front view. Uh, we'll see in a moment. So the expansion is problematic. So the front view. This is a bit more telling, I think. Yeah, that's a lot of motion to get through the clicker. I checked your clicker length. I, I don't think you have a close from clicker now, just front view. Um, where's the arrow? Wait, is, no, that, that's the um, the extension. Okay. I thought that was the arrow. So the arrow's behind the extension. So the, the length should be okay, but what's wrong the expansion? That was a slightly better one. The motion was good. You might be, you might be missing your anchor point by a few millimeters. Let's try again. Yeah, a bit of hip movement there. They can change your anchor point. The um, the drop can change your anchor point as well. But what I'm looking for is a clean um, expansion, and this isn't clean. There's a lot of um, contraction here. Is draw an issue? I wonder. Because that that it looks like he's struggling to get through. That's a yank right there. It's a it's a clean release, but he's yanked it way in excess of what he needs to. Um, draw weight could be a problem. Which is a normal. That's that's a fine part of learning. But what I expect at this point is the motion. I'm trying to think here. The motion would be here. I know he first he has to aim again, so that's a second aim step. It's one thing. What I expect from here is to anchor tightly, expand, and release in around one and a half to two seconds because it's already it should be on target right 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 here right now. So it should be one clean movement. Um, and it should be a clean release. What he sees a there's there's that again. Okay, I don't like that aim part there because 
um, he's spending too much time at full draw. So that's one thing I'm struggling with here. And again, if you're shooting at a level target, you're on target. You're shooting at a low target. You need to um, adjust your stance so that you are properly in line uh, with the target. So there's a, there's a shot drop. And there's the movement. He's not quite there yet. That was a slightly better shot. I think he had more control on the clicker there. So it's less energy waste in that shot. Let's see this one again. It's in. I see clean movement. Clean, clean, clean. That's not clean. So we'll go back to uh, over here. So we'll see elbow drop. He's not squeezing through cleanly. He's trying to engage more back muscle and he gets it through. So he's forcing it and then we'll see a shot there. So, I mean, he's grouping, which is good, actually. I mean, I, I know I make it sound really bad. He's grouping. Uh, what, what's the distance, by the way? I don't think it's a distance. What's his bow? Wait, is that only about 10 meters? Something? Oh, uh, that's, that's a pretty short distance. That's, that's fine. That's short distance. Judging by his um, sight setting, it's probably like 5 meters. That's completely fine. So, um, he's grouping. By the way, like, before you judge someone for, um, you know, how good or bad their grouping is, just remember the distance. Um, I know people... Um, who are watching the uh, Survival Lily uh, video, uh, how she got a Robin Hood, um, and people are like, oh my god, she's such a badass. She's only shooting like three meters away, so uh, it's only a matter of probability before you hit your own arrow. So um, yeah, just just be mindful. People who shoot their own arrows, have very tight groupings, remember distance. It's a very big thing. Um, it's why I test my bows. When people bring ask and review bows, I test them like ten meters because I can I, if, if, if I can I can group guarantee at ten meters like this much at ten meters, all right? If I can do that with any bow, then the bow is fine. You know, there's no issues there. Um, anything more than ten meters is kind of like, kind of like well, you know, it's more about me, and not the bow. So um, that's probably closer to have to a bench test. Um, but yeah, this this is uh, a good grouping. It's for five meters. Um, that, that's completely fine. Uh, but like I said, what I what I would suggest here, there are a couple of things to note. Would be, um, I would firstly, uh, I mean, if there's one thing to focus on, Sean, would be your pre-draw um, routine. I think you need to set up a, a pre-draw routine. So, like you, from what I'm seeing, it would seem like that you go through the motions without mentally being prepared for the shot. So you go through and you start the process, but you haven't really cemented what you're doing in your head. So by the time you get to your full draw, you know, you go, oh, wait, I'm aiming at the, at the target, the target's down there, and then I have to expand. Try to visualize the process before you start drawing the bow. So when you're in this position, not in that thing, let's go. So you've, you've done your shot. So you're in this position. Stop, 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 stop. Okay. When you're in this position, have a step where you let everything relax. You, you get your shoulders right, you get your fingers right, you get your bow group right. Have a step where you have what's called, we call, we call it a set of position. Depending on what, what process you use or what name you, you label. Have a system, have a process, right? Uh, I'm going to show this to you just you know, in mind, okay? So, you're, you're shooting, you're holding your bow. I've got a bow here. Sorry, I've got random bows lying around as I always do. So, random bow time. This is the, the Elven Ranger. I was, I was fixing the, uh, the grip. Okay, so I'm not going to draw this, but let's just go through the process we're thinking of, right? By the way, pretty bow. Pretty bow. Okay, so uh, where was I? Yeah, so, look, instead of going, all right, um, arrows, knock, let's do the sharp bang, like that, go, go through the motions first, okay? So what you want to do is to, you know, knock your arrow, and then the setup position is you're kind of pre-drawn, you're kind of getting everything right, your hand right position feels right here. Address the target and make sure everything feels right first. And this may take a second, might take several seconds, but have a step where after you knock the arrow and hook the string, drop everything in the right position. And then you visualize the motion you go through to complete the shot process. And then when you have that vision in mind, you do that in one smooth motion. You draw, you get to your anchor point, and then you release as you're done, as you do in training, as you do in practice. And then your next shot. Shoulders relaxed. 
and then you go through the motion in your head, you visualize it, and then you do it. And so on. But the important thing is, have this step, have a pre-draw routine, where you've knocked everything, you settle, your shoulders feel relaxed, your back muscles are ready, and then you shot in one motion. That's kind of what you want to look for. So I think the most important thing there, Sean, is a pre-draw routine. Uh, I think you lack that in your process, so you start too soon. So when you get the full draw, you're not mentally ready for the shot. Therefore, you're making all these small adjustments, but you're already cramping, you're compressing, you're collapsing, and therefore you're fighting against the bow full draw. I think that's probably what you need to do. And this is consistent with a shot. You kind of do it here, but you're tense. I can tell you're tense here. So I would, I, I would, I would say as a coach, your technique's okay, by the way, but your process needs to be smoothed out. I think here, let the bow sit on your toe and address the um the target. This is mental training. This is visual training. This is just as important as anything else in the shot process. It's visualization. It is address the target, think about what you're going to do, and then do it. Don't think about what you're doing as you're doing it. That's not going to work for you. Because there's, uh, as far as I can see, your arrows are the right length. Your clicker is the right length. Things should be okay. But you struggle to get through. I think most because you've lost that um, attention there. That, okay, that's a decent shot, that one there. But I feel that a pre-draw focus is going to help you a lot, a lot. I mean, you do it there slightly. But very slightly. That's better. All right. And then visualize, execute. There are a few other things to kind of uh, iron out alongside that. That's a long pull. Have more conviction this shot, by the way. You're on target, power it through. I think you use your hand too much to pull that. So you're struggling a bit to get your, you're, you're struggling a bit to get your back tension in line. Apart from that, they're doing okay. You're doing it right. I mean, you're, like, you're, it seems that your alignments are right, your sights are on target, so you can group, which is a, a good point of validation. If you can group, that's a milestone. So nothing wrong there. But to make it even better, more consistent, and more control, I think the mentally have a pre-shot routine that you can walk through. And maybe the rest of it might, might you know, iron out as you do more of that. And that is the conclusion of the um, formal submissions. Um, if people want to send me anything like now, go for it. I'll, I'll be checking a few more. Uh, but if that is all, we'll hang around for a few more minutes and then we'll uh, wrap this form check up. So what do you think, chat? What are your comments? What are your thoughts? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, why doesn't Uka sponsor? Um, good question. Um, you need a big marketing, um, basically, a, a department in your company, right? Uka, as far as I know, isn't a big company. Hoyt's a big company. Win-Win's a big company, right? But even Win-Win has a pretty poor, like, you know, public relations, um, publicity, um, you know, marketing kind of thing. Like, they kind of sell within a very small circle. Hoyt's a good example of very good marketing. Um, but yeah, you need people who are in a company who are good at marketing, who are good at, you know, communicating and so on. Um, Uka might not have the resources to, you know, like, hire someone. You can, like, they can support us in a free year. So, that's tough. Uh, it's not just a matter of we'll sponsor you and therefore, um, you know, we will uh, give you free limbs or free bow or something. Um, you, you you need a foot in the door. Like you need you need archers who are you know 
um, you, that you can poach. Uh, a lot of archers who do really well might be picked up by a different company first because um, that company has bigger marketing, they've got more scouts, more people watching the results in the US or Australia or so on. So, I mean, like, who, who would they sponsor, right? That's, that's not already sponsored. So you need to pick up talent quick, otherwise um, you don't get that chance. The people who use Uka buy because they like it. They, they won't try it, and, and they, they, they like it. Doesn't mean that um, you know, like they're they're not good, but like I think um, a company need to be very active um, in the archery scene, and unfortunately, the archery scene isn't very big, so the events kind of go by without anyone really paying attention, unless they're already in the scene. Um, additionally, that like, you know, you might have to sponsor things like events, like Hoyt sponsors events, um, whereas uh, Uka doesn't. There might be other reasons, but it's not just a simple matter of we'll give you a free bow, therefore we, you, you, we'll sponsor you, or something like that. It's a bit more complex than that. I'm not sure we are asking Jordan, by the way, reviewing on the Mandarin Duck Bow, which one? So I've basically reviewed like nearly every bow <laughs> they have. They're pretty hoodie, yes. That's this is the uh, the uh, UB Workshop Assassin's Creed Three hoodie, the um, uh, the Connor hoodie. Yeah, Ian. Um, it looked like the arrow was too long. That was my first impression. Unfortunately, I can't see the pixel, so uh, it doesn't. Re I can't see how long it is. I think the arrows are fine. Either the arrows are too long, it's for Sean's video. Either the arrows too long, the click is set too short, uh, or um, he's having trouble with its expansion. It's one of those things, but um, yeah, it's, it's a, click control is very important. Uh, if you have to move your head or draw back extra far for the shot, then it's not going to work very well for you. Yeah, I, I agree with the second part of your comment too, Ian. Um, it, it seems like he's pulling through, not with his back muscles. Um, <laughs> yeah, I haven't used Uka, so I don't really know much about Uka's limbs and how they're working fit. Uh, win or win, uh, we are with ATF. If, if I ever get my hands on one, sure. You know, um, I, I would like to try bows. Uh, I mean, the closest I have is the um, you know, the uh, the A AL one. I don't have the ATF though. Uh, I think the ATF replaced the L one. Um, I do know someone in the club who has the uh, AXT, which is the aluminium version of the CXT. Um, I've got uh a Gillo bow that can be reviewed. Because again, yeah, most of the bows I review aren't mine. Um, if a company sends me a bow. I review it, but um, most of the other bows I review are basically other people who I borrow for like a day or something, so they don't know which time to shoot it. Okay, alright, well I think that covers uh, today's form check, uh, re relatively short one. Uh, as usual people, uh, if you want to get your um, form checked and have some commentary, um, feel free to send uh, your form videos to me. Uh, otherwise, thank you all for joining me. I um, hope you've all uh, gained something from this discussion. Uh, we all like to learn from each other. Uh, nobody's perfect here. We're all learning. I'm learning. You're learning. And hopefully by doing this, we uh, again, we build up this, this wealth and, and bank of knowledge and experience so that we all have something to share and something to learn. Thank you all for joining me, guys. Uh, this is uh, New Sensei. Uh, hopefully you uh, have a good archery day wherever you are. And I will see you next time.